well we don't want to make sure that we want to make sure that we don't give out like do we don't confirm his like ideas that we are with the underground king so we'll go with this one actually the king of the underground is not our friend he even attacked us this morning actually the king of the underground is not our friend he even attacked us this morning i say out loudly so he finally came to his senses when he realized who you were gontok says well that still doesn't make up for the fact that he has been harboring criminals first the rebels and now you it's clear that this king of the underground is working against the best interests of all endor and i'll make sure he gets punished for it hey gontok hardrick says you really think you have the luxury to talk to the other people after you challenge me to a battle be serious, Gondok says. You know full well that I'm only toying with you. I know your fighting style by heart already. At this point, there's nothing you can do that would surprise me in the slightest. S uh, he's going to say slightest. Before Gondok gets to finish uh, what he was saying, Hardrick makes a quick jump forward, landing exactly in front of the enemy. Then, in the span of one second, Hardrick, Har Hardrick enlarges himself to the size of a normal human. He then kicks Gondok in the face, sending him crashing into a nearby wall. <laughs> Gondok says as he get now gets up. Looking at the human size Hardrick in front of him while wiping the blood from his upper lip. You've been shapeshifting as a dwarf for so long that I almost forgot that your real body proportions. That those these are the were your real body proportions, Hardrick. Uh, this was a good surprise attack, I'll grant you that. So what are you planning to do now? Fight me in your new human size form? Hope that it'll give you somehow give you it will somehow be enough to throw me off my game. No, Hardrick says. What I'm planning to do is this. He rushes forward towards Gontok again and he feigns a punch to his face. But instead he Instead of going through with it, he immediately shifts shifts back into a dwarf and punches him in the stomach instead. As Gontok jumps sideways to put some distance between the two, Hardrick follows him and he again changes his size to that of human. This time Gontok was expecting and he tries to hit him in the uh, bridge of his nose, but what he gets to punch is an empty air. While Hardrick once again switches back to his dwarf form and kicks, him, kicks his opponent in the shin. Well, that's pretty cool. I can. I really. I don't. I've heard recently that there are people out there that I can that cannot like imagine stuff. Like, how do you even enjoy a story like this? Like, I'm fucking picturing like an entire fucking city. I'm picturing everyone standing at the back. I'm picturing a street with that cobblestone and like uh, you know two fucking people constantly shifting shapes and fighting. Like, I'm I'm just imagining every single thing. And I cannot believe there are people that I cannot imagine that they think of it like as text rather than images. Which is like, like holy shit, dude! That must really limit you. But you enjoy life. Like I would go insane if I could not imagine. Like holy shit. Where was I? For the next half minute, half of a minute or so, Hardra keeps changing his size constantly while fighting in order to make sure. That his enemy is as confused as possible. I expected Gontor looks like he's having a really hard time adapting to such unusual fighting style. But the first time since we have met, it seems like he is now fully on the defensive. Without even attempting to land a hit anymore, after sustaining a few more injuries, Gontok realizes that he needs to regain control of the battle. So he shape shifts only his back into that of an archer porcupine, then he turns around, sending a few of the quills flying toward Hardrick at such a higher speed at, at a much higher speed than what I've witnessed from the porcupines in the area of Talius. As Hardrick dodges the first few projectiles, Gontok sends more of them his way, forcing his enemy to gradually back away from him in order to give himself a bit of time to catch his breath. Looks like finally remembering what it means to be a warrior, old fan, Gontok says while breathing heavily. That's good. I was beginning to worry that all those years you've spent masquerading as a dwarf has turned you soft. I can tell your parents that their pathetic son has at least not completely lost his honor. Not that they would care much, of course. Most of the times when I talk to them about you, they they like to pretend that you don't even exist. Shut your mouth and continue the fight, Gontok, Hardrick says, but he's interrupted. Was it worth it, Hardrick? Gontok shouts loudly in order to drown out Hardrick's voice. Was it worth it and leave your homeland behind, along with all your friends and family, just because of that? what happened to an insignificant dwarf village? Dwarf, Araka says, I swear if I see you losing your cool again over this. I get it, Hardrick tells in a calm tone, even though it's clear that he's barely able to contain his anger. What did you even hope to accomplish by traveling through the dwarven lands in the shape of a dwarf? Gontok acts, Hardrick, while ignoring Araka. Were you trying to atone for your sins? Like, clearly provocation. Do you think that you'd somehow make things right after killing all those dwarf women and children? By going to put flowers on the graves or something, face it, Hardrick, you're a murderer like the rest of us. The only difference between you and me is that I'm not an honorless dog like you. Dog like you, I can live with killing a few civilians during a war without turning into a complete coward. Dwarf. Haraka says, if I, if you let him get under your skin again, I swear I'm going to rip out your spine and 
I said, I get it. Harik shouts loudly as he rushes furiously towards Gontok. When Gontok tries to block his opponent's first hit, Harik shifts, shifts back into the size of a leprechaun, slides between Gontok's legs and arriving behind him. Then he almost instantly be uh, turns back to a human size, grabbing Gontok's head from behind, pushing it into the ground. As he is now holding Gontok's head against the pavement with his left hand, Harik goes for the finishing blow, attempting to punch him as hard as he can with his right fist in the back of his head. What happens instead is that Hardrick's fist hits a small semi-transparent barrier right above Gontok's head which appears seemingly out of nowhere. Gontok takes advantage of the confusion Hardrick in its Hardrick is in a Hardrick is in to escape his grab and is to jump backwards. Once he is safely out of his old friend's reach, he begins staring at the narrow alley to your to our right with a reproachful look in his eyes. Your help was unnecessary, Captain, Gontok says. Was it really? We heard the voice of the Captain of the Guards, as he now slowly revealing himself. It most certainly didn't look like you had things under control from where I was standing, Recruit. Have you been watching us this whole time, Gontok says. I've been watching enough of this fight to know that you're out of your league, Gontok. The Captain says, I did not want to interrupt you at first because you tend to react badly when people interfere with your duels, but after seeing your abysmal performance just now, I've concluded that I've already let you waste enough of my time as it is. Get out of the way, Gontok. The rest of us, the rest of us will take, take it from here. As Gontok looks like he is simply boiling with rage, the other all guards are now approaching us one by one from every direction. You're going to talk, are going to let him insult you like this? But there's no point in saying that. We have provoked him once. We are not going to do this simple shit again. Captain, you just interrupted a sacred duel. Do you have no honor? Yeah, get out of the way. Gone talk, only real warriors are allowed. Okay, that's actually funny. I will say that one. Do you think you're funny is that it? Gontok tells me as if he now turns his furious gaze to me. Maybe I'll be less inclined to crack jokes once I come over and break both your kneecaps. You won't be breaking anyone's kneecap, Gontork. Captain says, I've already told you, role in this fight is over. We will dispose of these criminals in a matter of seconds so you can just stand there and watch. After the captain is done talking, an immense pressure immobilizes all of us uh, to the ground. All of us to the ground, immobilizing us in an instant. As I'm hearing some voices above me, I struggle to raise my head so I can see what's going on. Apparently, in the short time when I wasn't looking, the sky had been filled with large rocks that are floating in the air, just waiting to be dropped on us. A few seconds later, the Earth Elementary, who is controlling the rock, decides to throw some of them into us. While we are being pinned against the ground, before they reach us, Darren raises his sword in the air, immediately moves it to the side, which immediately breaks the effects of the captain's aura manipulation technique. With no time to waste, captain conjures a floating shield made of reinforced ice over our heads, while Hardrick makes a huge big high jump and smashes the highest of the boulders, heading towards us into small pieces. Some of the rocks break through Kate's eyes, but we manage to move away from them to avoid getting hit. Ha! Gontok laughs. What's the matter, Captain? I thought you had everything under control. Do you need a help? Do you need a hand, perhaps? Keep quiet, you imbecile, the Captain says. They would have all been dead now by now if you had followed my original plan. You can take your original plan and shove it up your ass, Gontok says. I'm not nobody's lapdog, and especially not yours. Hey Luna, I whisper, if I can keep them talking for a while longer, do you think you can conjure those huge flying water serpents from yesterday again? I've been preparing the spell ever since the guards have been heading towards us, Luna sends a low voice. I could cast it now, but most of these mages would be strong enough to destroy the serpents without much effort. If my spell is, if my spell is to have any effect on them, they need to be get immobilized first. I could try and freeze all the enemies around us, but you'd have to huddle up closer so I don't freeze any of you by accident, Kate whispers. Hey, Hardrick, I say in a low voice. I'm not gonna say the PSST because this is a fucking lavier mic and it's going to blow your eardrums if I do that. It makes a really uncomfortable sound. I say in a low voice, Hardrick, can you hear me? Damn it, he is not looking at us. Hey, where's Loirang anyway? Uh, Gontok says, shouldn't he be here by now? He received the same message we all did, says a royal guard with pointy ears and short blonde hair who appears to be an elf. If he is not here, then he is disobeying a direct order from the king. Didn't he say he needed to go to the herbless shop, Gontok says, the area is full of them. Maybe he's one of the shops and he'll get here as soon as he's finished. So applying to yourself, Gontok, and the elf says, it's clearly that your friend betrayed us. What did you just say to me? Gontok says, it looks at the elf menacingly. Hardrick, Kate says as loud as she can, while still keeping her voice low enough to not draw attention to herself from the others. As Hardrick finally turns to look in our direction, Kate signals him to come closer to us through a hand gesture. When you understand what he, she means, the dwarf begins to approach us with small steps in order to not distract our enemies while they are still arguing. What the hell is going on here? We hear the voice of Thelius Ambassador coming from somewhere behind the captain. 
in the same alleyway. What are the idiots? What are you idiots doing? Ambassador, I told you to wait in one of the empty houses where it was safe until Captain says, Silence, you cretin, Ambassador shouts angrily as we now see him.